All right, this one's for all of you Matthews Mafia members that watched my PSE review and thought I was a Dudley fanboy. I mean, I am, but that doesn't make the review invalid. I shot a Verdicts for all of 2019. It's like that means nothing to you people. You Matthew shooters, you guys are so on brand. At the ATA show, I actually saw Crispy Real return his salad because the lettuce was an ambush green. True story. Hey everybody, AJ from Knights of the Apex here. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm uh, gonna be upgrading this room a little bit, the Coda Cast, Coda Collective, whatever. We still haven't decided on a name for it, but gonna be upgrading it to hopefully kill the reverb that's going on in here. I know it's driving me crazy. I'm sure it's driving all of you crazy. Hopefully this will be the last video that you'll hear that. What we're gonna be talking about today, the 2020 Matthews VXR28. Before we do, disclosures. Um, I do not know anybody at Matthews. I'm pretty sure that Matthews is completely unaware of my existence. This bow is actually the personal bow of one of the Coda crew members. This is Todd's bow. I've built a number of bows for him in the past and I did put this one together. And I'll be going off of both his feedback and my personal experience with the VXR28 for today's review. Uh, we've had this thing since it came out in early November, and so far he's loved it, and I get why. Awesome bow, I was a big fan of the Verdicts last year. There are some quirks to this system that I'll go over later in the review, um, but overall just a phenomenal bow, and I get why it's been getting such rave reviews. So Matthews runs deep with the Coda crew, and for good reason. Since the Triax came out a couple of years ago, Matthews has really dominated in terms of the combination of speed, forgiveness, uh, dead in the hand feel, and just quiet and lack of vibration. There's really been nobody to compete with them in all three of those categories. Three, four. You get the point. What Matthews did with the VXR28 and with the VXR31.5 is they took the tried and true design that has been a winning formula for them with the Triax and then with the Vertex and the Traverse last year and they streamlined all of the features into both the 31 and a half and this 28 and they improved them slightly. So new for this year is the new riser design. Uh, they made the little PP a little bit more forward. Uh, it's more of a bridge design. There's more cutouts. The riser is actually longer. So this is a 28 inch axle to axle bow which is the same uh, axle to axle as the Triax, but the riser itself is actually longer. That gives you a much more, f I shouldn't say much more, that gives you a slightly more stable feel at full draw. What most shooters will compare the 28 to is how the Vertex felt last year, which was a 30 and a half inch axle to axle bow. And what you'll find with the 31 and a half inch axle to axle bow is it shoots very similar to the Traverse. So slight improvement, it definitely looks cool. This new ambush green is just one of the most badass colors on the market right now. I think it looks just absolutely phenomenal. And they did a great job. There was nothing wrong with these bows the last two years, but they've just made slight refinements. The cross centric cams with switch weight technology, forward 3D harmonic dampener, and um, the integrate rest mount all carry over from last year's models or, or years previous, as does the engage grip. This is actually a modified engage grip. This is an aftermarket grip from our buddy uh, Rob over at Rattler Grips. Of course, he made one with a custom Coda logo. Uh, the big difference here versus the standard engage grip is Rob removed the front flare of the grip. This was actually a design feature that a lot of target archers had been requesting. I know that when I was shooting a Vertex, I found that I would always want a higher purchase on the bow and my front finger would creep up and it was a little uncomfortable because on the standard grip, there's a wider flare in the front here. Rob removed that, allowing you to get higher on the grip. Of course, if you're shooting broadheads, keep that in mind, right? You don't want to take your knuckle off, uh, but super comfortable design there. Otherwise, aside from the color options which he gives you, uh, pretty much the standard engage grip. New for this year is the massively overpriced Silent Connect system. What this is is actually a, it's basically a dowel um, that connects, it screws in in between your two uh, limbs. And what that allows you to do is take your equally overpriced Matthews branded power cord, loop it between the limbs and onto this dowel. And now you can hoist your bow into your tree stand uh, and have an extra $70 attached to the price tag. I will now show you how you can 
have your own Silent Connect system on virtually any bow. Simply tie a paracord loop, run it down between your limbs, take that loop and put it over your stabilizer, and hoist. Now objectively speaking, there's no denying that this bow is absolutely awesome. I mean, Matthews has been dominating in terms of speed, vibration, quietness, uh, just overall shootability the last couple of years. Anytime somebody picks up a Matthews for the first time and shoots one, almost everyone has the same reaction. They go, whoa. It just is unlike anything most of us have ever shot before. There's nothing else on the market still to this day that is as quiet, uh, that is as dead in your hand and just has as little vibration, but with the speed that this bow does. And I'll list the full list of specs below in the description for you to check out. Um, this bow's been out for a couple months, so I assume most of you are already familiar with them. Now, having said all of that, this bow is not without its quirks. Now they've improved upon a lot of those in recent years, but there's still some things that you should be aware of just to take into account. Most of the things I'm about to talk about are going to be subjective, right? It's gonna be based on user preference. You may find that the things I'm about to lay out are some of the very features that you like about the bow, and that's fine to each their own. Um, what you'll find and you'll hear me say over and over again, biggest difference is going to come in the character of the bow and the character of the shooter and finding the right partnership between both. There are no bad flagship bows on the market, at least not from the major manufacturers. Which one is right for you and which one is the best purchase is just gonna come down to what draws the most potential out of you as the shooter. The first thing, the strings. Uh, there's no way to say this other than the Matthews factory zebra strings just suck. Um, Matthews strings are like the Glock factory sites of the archery world. Most people find is that they'll get endless cable stretch and peep turn. You can almost use your peep to plan the moon phases. Oh, sorry guys, can't go hunting tonight. It looks like it's a new moon. Uh, if you haven't experienced that, I'd assume you're either shooting a lighter poundage bow or you just don't shoot enough to notice. But I can say that there seems to be an endless breaking period with the zebra strings and that only gets worse and worse. If they do settle down, it's for a couple of hundred shots and then right around 500 to 750 arrows, uh, you'll start to notice that your cables will stretch again. It's very frustrating. Constantly chasing your peep around, um, you're shooting really well and then you realize all of a sudden you've had a drop in poundage because your cables have stretched and now you're no longer in spec and you've lost as much as three, four pounds of pulling weight. Um, they're just not good. Matthews does a lot of things great. They're a phenomenal company when it comes to engineering and bow design. Strings are just not what they do well. The strings that you're seeing on this bow are gas bow strings. I've been running gas bow strings on all of the Coda Crew bows and it's what I actually ran on my bow. I ran gas strings and I ran hogwire strings last year on my Vertex. They have no break in period and they really do not stretch even in changing weather conditions. So being that the Matthews has issues with cable stretch and peep turn, the gas is just a perfect pairing for this particular bow. And I know there's other quality string manufacturers on the market right now. Gas is just the one that I have the most experience using and have had a lot of luck with on Matthews. And I've, I've got them on about six or seven different Matthews at this point. Tri-X, Vertex, and now the VXR series. And they've all held up really well. Now that's it for really true detractors. Everything else I'm about to get into is completely subjective. And like I said, uh, these are things to keep in mind that I want to cover because I feel like a lot of reviewers that I've watched just have kind of glossed over these features. Um, but just something to keep in mind. And like I said earlier, you might find that the features I'm about to cover are things that you actually like about the bow. Now Matthews by nature are very top heavy bows. Part of having that center shot feature is there's just more mass weight up top. Hoyt compensates for that by actually widening their limb pocket and adding more mass below. What I did on my Vertex last year was I actually took a stack of weights, I used a threaded rod on the back bar mount here and I just added about five or six ounces of weight to the bottom to just add some more weight below my hand uh, to create a lower center of gravity. And you'll actually see on this particular bow, uh, Taz added the side rod mount um, because he has just been messing with different stabilizer positions because he's having some difficulty just finding a good balance point. Now granted, uh, this particular bow does have a Garmin Zero on it, which is 
known to be a heavier sight, so that's not helping the top heavy nature of this bow at all. Um, but just by default, the Matthews series bows are just, they're top heavy, they're kind of awkward to carry around the woods, even at your side, it just constantly wants to tip forward. Um, but that's why you'll see a lot of guys running a heavier stabilizer setup mount and usually some sort of side rod. Uh, it's just to bring that center of gravity lower and help balance the bow. Getting into the cams, the Matthews cross center cam system is a more aggressive cam. And what I mean by aggressive is it's very stiff in the beginning and it's pretty much stiff throughout and then it, it goes from pulling to locked out. There's really no valley to this system. It's just pull, 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 boom, and then you're against the, the wall. Now it is a very firm wall and you're really hard against it and the fact that there is no valley keeps you extremely consistent. Shooters coming from systems that are a little bit softer like a PSE or a Hoyt find that they tend to shoot the Matthews very well very quickly and a lot of that can usually be attributed to the fact that the wall forces you to be so consistent. Now personally what I found what I didn't like about that was in hunting situations where I would be say tracking a target or moving or shooting at different elevations like a total archery challenge. If I wasn't cognizant of being completely on that wall, the bow would want to pull away from me. And that was something that I just I just didn't love. It didn't give me a lot of confidence. Um, I prefer more of a valley like on the Hoyts or the PSCs where I can check in, um, know exactly where I am on the wall and then pull, pull, pull to fire. Um, that's just kind of how what I like. But like I said, a lot of shooters go to the system and they find they they can get very accurate very quickly because it forces you to be consistent. Now when it comes to setting up and tuning a Matthews, I'm a little bit conflicted because in some areas it's very easy, in other areas it's kind of a pain in the ass. One of the things that Matthews does really well is their attention to detail in their engineering. So Matthews is designed, the, the VXR28 series like the Vertix and the Triax before it are designed with a center shot in mind, meaning that the knocking point should place the knock of the arrow directly in between the two axles so that the arrow fires through the middle of the riser. When you set up your bow that way, and you use the Matthews Integrate Ultra Rests from QAD, there's a little notch on the riser that corresponds with the zero hash mark on the Integrate Rest. Set just like that, you're probably going to find that you don't have to change that elevation when it comes time to paper tune. So one of the things I don't like is when it comes time to swap out strings and cables, to change those cables because of the way that it's set up, this loop over the axle, you have to actually remove the axle to remove uh, these split cables right here. Matthews makes that as easy as possible. Uh, their axles are actually held in place by Allen screws, so you just need two Allen screws and you can loosen that up and take slide the axle right out. Um, so it's as easy as it can possibly be, but still a little bit of a pain in the ass to have to remove the axles. And also the top hat design. So you might be able to see on camera, but there, the two spacers in there, uh, those are the Matthews top hats. They call them top hats because those spacers are actually connected to sleeves that run inside the limbs. When you take them out, they look like, uh, like Abraham Lincoln's hat. That's why they're called top hats. One side is uh, thicker than the other. So, which allows you to shim the cams one way or another. Now, when this came out, this was a, seen as a very revolutionary and ingenious design. Uh, technology's moved a little bit since then, but it's still pretty good. What I found on most Matthews is that I do have to swap out. Usually the bottom top hats uh, will set me straight. What I'll usually find with Triax, Vertix, Traverse, uh, and now the VXR28 that I've set up, um, all of those out of the factory, I would have a hard left or right tear. If I would just take out the bottom top hats and swap those, it would immediately take out that tear, a little bit of fine tuning with the rest, and I was good to go. You know, the thing with the top hat system that some people have complained about is that you're either this way or that way, but you don't have a lot of adjustment. In all fairness, I don't know how much I would worry about that because like I said, I have yet to have an issue where swapping out just one of the top hats and using the rest didn't tune the bow uh, perfectly well. But that really covers all of my complaints or gripes about the bow and the Matthew system. And like I said, it's really not that much. And when you take into account all of the positives that this bow has going for it, 
I don't know if I would call it the best bow ever. Um, I'm not even sure I would call it the best bow of 2020, but it's definitely up there. It's for sure a contender, and I think it's probably the bow that all other bows are probably judged against the most. And quite frankly, it's earned that position. Matthews has really earned that over the last couple years. If you're in the market for a new bow and you are looking at the VXR 28 or 31, um, if you've been a fan of the Triax, the Vertex, and the Traverse, this represents the best of those bows and then some. As far as which one to get, the 28 or the 31 and a half, uh, if you're a shorter draw length shooter, if you're somebody that hunts out of ground blinds a lot or tree stands that have a lot of cover, uh, maybe you wanna go with the 28. Otherwise, if you're a longer draw length guy, you hunt in more open terrain and you don't have those space confinements, go with the 31 and a half. It'll be a, a more forgiving bow, it's not a lot of uh, a change as far as weight goes. It's not much heavier. So yeah, that's my VXR review, everybody. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll have affiliate links below for all of the gear that's on that bow right there. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time. Send them straight. And congrats to Hallman Logan J for being the winner of the Reef and Reel and Coda uh, Yeti Rambler giveaway. So DM me on Instagram and send me your address and I'll send this out to you right away.